What's up y'all and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my latest pickups. Oh yes, Blastroids from Atari. You are the scum. Ba, 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 ba. Blastroids was developed by Atari in 1987 and there was only 2,000 machines made as this was during the time that the arcades were in a slump, which means that it likely didn't get the recognition that it could have or should have because the arcades weren't getting the attention that they were a few years prior. Now, according to some of the research that I've done through Vintage Arcade Gal and Todd Tucky, the reason why there wasn't very many of them released was because it didn't do very well. So I'm gonna play this clip real quick right here from Todd Tucky so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. The third official Asteroids in the series released in 1988 and Atari thought this would take off, it did not. They only made 2,000 of them, Frank. As a matter of fact, I think in the back here, ours is officially, we think 600. So anyways, I just wanted to show you guys some of the things that I did to it, how I got it, and talk a little bit about how awesome the coin ops community is. So shout out to Steve. Thanks for going out of your way to pick this thing up for me. I actually put out a tweet that said, here's my bucket list, what's yours? And on my bucket list, Blastroids is one of the games on there. Steve responded and said, hey, there's actually one out here in Vegas and sent me the offer up listing for it. And I was like, whoa, cool. So I think the guy was asking like $500 for it or 550, something like that. And it had already been knocked down in price. And so I believe I asked, if he would take 500 for it and he agreed to so it worked out well and i was just trying to figure out a way to get up there and get it without having to pay you shit because i really didn't want to pay more than 300 dollars to get it down here what ended up happening that made the whole thing work though was that steve was actually like hey when i get back i will go pick this thing up for you if you can't figure out another way to get up here and get it and I was like, no way, that's awesome, you rock. And he actually did, he picked it up for me. So I Venmoed him and he paid for it, picked it up and put it at his friends who has a warehouse, I guess, where they store other arcade machines. Then I just had to figure out shipping. It just seemed like it would be easier to have somebody bring it to me. And Ralph convinced me to try out U-Ship. Luckily, I found someone who's willing to help me for $250. Anyways, I want to get into it now, so let's go take a look and see what this thing is all about. beautiful, right? Well, there was a couple of repairs that I did have to make to this cabinet. One of them was there was actually Bondo on the bottom left half of the cabinet. And I'm going to show you guys a quick clip of the repair so you can just see what I did. But basically I sanded it down and then painted over it. It looks great. I really didn't want to do any more than I had to with this. So I just cleaned it up really well and removed any scuffs, touched up any areas that needed to be touched up. The control panel was cut off, so I just went ahead and touched that up with black as well. But here is the clip of me working on the Bondo and just basically sanding down what was already there and then painting over it. This is Krylon latex paint and it's in satin black. And the reason why I use a foam roller like this is because it's really easy to feather it out, especially if you look at the original color on it. You don't want it to have a dark sheen and going from dark to light because the original color is more worn down, so you have to feather it out. And using the foamy actually just makes it easier. 
I did replace the bulbs behind the coin reject buttons and the coin mix are good to go. There's the volume control that's on the actual PCB where you can easily adjust it. The sound on this game is great by the way. One of the things that was really fantastic about this cab was the fact that the artwork was so well preserved. The only problem was is that it was missing from either end of the control panel. They don't make reproduction artwork for it, but that's okay. I have the main piece on both sides, which I'm very happy about. And lastly, it came with these off-brand spinners. I don't really know why they did this. Maybe it was the only replacement they could find, but I was able to find some Atari reproduction spinners and I'm gonna use those. Now, while the overall picture quality of the monitor does look great, I think the wires are crossed for the vertical and horizontal adjustment settings and that's something that I have to look into a little bit more because I can't adjust the width of the screen beyond a certain point. Let's get into some gameplay and we'll talk about a few other things. You might hear the buttons sound kind of clunky and I think it's the springs inside of them. They just feel really stiff. The other thing is the sound of those spinners whizzing around. That's kind of annoying, but it's all fixable. There's a lot of cool things that you can do in this game. Weapon upgrades, you get cool weapons. You can morph into three different ships, the fast one, the speeder, the medium one, and then the big one, which has a lot of firepower. There are basically four different difficulty levels per each game, and the ultimate goal is to beat the massive Mucor that has all of his little, I don't know, mucus holes? Blech. Case in point, once I beat him here, you'll see that I'm gonna go to level two, which is where basically I start all over, but there's more levels in that level to play before you get to Mucor. I do want to say I love the coin ops community. It's all very chill. People are very cool and, and always looking out for each other, uh, especially as collectors, because a lot of these things are kind of in nooks and crannies and harder to come by. And in today's market, a lot of people are asking more than what some of these machines are worth or what they should be going for. Cause it's like somebody has an arcade machine that's in decent condition and they think it's like a gold mine. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all that cool YouTube stuff, leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. All your guys' support on this channel is greatly appreciated, um, whether you're just coming through and watching the video or whether you're a subscriber or a member. So thanks, and until next time, I'll see you guys then.